The following is a production of Cary TV, the town of Cary's government access channel. I will now call the September 16th meeting of Cary's Planning and Zoning Board to order, and um, I will take note that we are a board of seven tonight. So um, our first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Do we have any changes or amendments to the agenda? Okay, if not, I'll take a motion. I move that we approve the, uh, adopt the agenda for this evening. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. And now we'll move to the approval of the August 19th minutes, regular meeting minutes. Any amendments to discuss or changes? All right, hearing none, I'll take a motion to have those approved. So moved. Okay, we have a motion, do we have a second? I will second. Okay, great. All in favor? Aye. 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 And any opposed? No, nope. motion carries seven to zero. All right, our first case tonight will require a public hearing. This is 13 CPA 04. I'll give a few rules about the public hearing. Um, staff is gonna give us a presentation and following that presentation, um, if we had a second applicant, they would give a presentation also and they would have 10 minutes, but we have, um, staff is the applicant tonight. Um, so immediately following staff's comments, we'll open the public hearing and I'll give further instructions then. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, tonight we have uh, the proposed collector street revisions for the proposed Ashton Wood subdivision. Um, it, this subdivision's east of Kildare Farm Road between 1010 and Arthur Pierce Roads. The request, uh, which was initiated by the engineering department, is to shift uh, the alignment of the proposed collector street uh, that goes across the uh, Jones Farm, Jones Family Farm, and from to, to change its designation from a collector avenue to collector street. So, on this uh, diagram here, we would change it from this point where it would currently crosses Chamont Drive in the Grenadier neighborhood, and move it and move it over to, as a collector street so it goes straight south down to the new collector street that's in the neighborhood um, being proposed. And then it would continue across over to Arthur Pierce, including a connection to the proposed collector avenue south of it off the property. Uh, this is a change that staff had identified before as needing revision during the CTP updates. Um, but now that we have an acceptable um, 
alternative that was brought forth by the subdivision that's currently underway uh, in order so they can move forward with their subdivision and their site development approval, uh, we move forward with this uh, comprehensive plan amendment and saw that it was a, a fitting alternative. This collector uh, uh, street in this neighborhood uh, serves to connect the neighborhoods between Killer Farm, 1010, Arthur Pierce, and Holly Springs Road and helps facilitate shorter trips in between the different neighborhoods, as well as better emergency access and utility service uh, in the area. The rezoning for the subdivision was approved uh, at the June uh, 13th council meeting. And uh, the current alignment that's actually there now was developed back in 2001 during the CTP um, plan at that point before the Grenadier uh, subdivision actually constructed or while it was actually under construction. So. Um, the pros, the, the alignment that's there now was something that was there when it was all greenfield. Um, the changes that's been proposed uh, translate to having uh, more right-of-way dedication for the developer, but would allow driveways along the streets um, to help facilitate the, uh, uh, access to it uh, for the uh, homes that are going to be along it. And it also provides better connectivity through the neighborhood instead of having two stub outs that go to nowhere uh, on the existing uh, plan. Uh, and it also helps reduce uh, direct property impacts off the site. This shows the difference between the two uh, cross sections that are proposed. Collector Avenue on the top, 70 foot right away, no driveways. Bottom is what the Collector Street has proposed. A uh, 60 foot right away allows driveways. Both have bike facilities and sidewalks. Notification was sent out to the 22 property owners within 400 feet of the proposed changes, uh, eight of them being directly affected, um, as well as uh, mailers, uh, postings, and the uh, newspaper advertisements as per our LDO. Here you see the transportation plan network in larger view. Um, the two sections on either side of this will, will be looked at during the CTP update, um, considering that they connect to the uh, thoroughfares on either side. We need to look at it in a more holistic manner and look at the connections on the other side of the street. So instead of trying to bring it all forward at one time, we'll deal with that during the CTP update when we're looking at the broader, broader network. Uh, the Greenways and Parks plan shows a uh, side street trail that was to go along this uh, collector street um, that would help connect the neighborhoods to a future park that's proposed south of this area. Um, the review by the Parks and Recreation staff um, and some uh, work with the developer, uh, the street side trail is no longer be needed because we have some better connections on how we're going to set up the uh, Greenway network in there. So this issue is a, a moot point now. Uh, the developer has done a good job coordinating with the neighbors all through his process of putting this uh, uh, plan together. In terms of this issue itself, he met with the neighbors uh, shown in STARS or, or their representatives on July 31st, uh, went over their issues and concerns, and has been working with them to make sure everything is uh, um, good with them on, on this amendment. Um, he has indicated that uh, through all the work they've done that there's no opposition to this by the neighbors shown. Uh, we've also had some neighbors contact us that are shown in the green stars and the ones outlined by the green, and uh, they all are have no opposition to this as well. We've actually had more comments actually on the section to the south, to the north of it, and when we explained the whole process, everybody was good and on board and was going to look forward to looking at those changes during the CTP updates with the community plan update. The property owner to the south. Uh, sent in a letter that, proposed that, uh, that the proposed changes were supported by, that, uh, by his uh, family. Cary's Land Development Ordinance includes four criteria that should be considered when evaluating requests to change the comprehensive plan. Uh, based on the rezoning and site plan submittals from the, uh, for the proposed developer uh, development, staff believes that the request meets the second criteria to provide opportunities to realign the proposed collector to increase short-term and long-term connectivity and help reduce future property impacts. 
as indicated in the staff report and by the department's uh, initiation of the CPA request, we support this and believe it's reasonable and we recommend that the board forward this case to council with its approval. Thank you, Mr. Dalk. I think um, we'll open the public hearing now and let me read through these rules um, regarding the public hearing. If one person at a time will approach the podium and use the microphone closest to the clerk, please give the clerk a completed comment card and any handouts that you may have for the board. Um, you will have up to five minutes and there's a timer on the podium and it will begin flashing 30 seconds before your time expires. Please be concise, avoid repetition, adhere to the time limit, designate a spokesperson for large groups, and direct comments to the full board and not an individual <clears throat> member. And you will not have any comments back from us on the board. So with that said, I'll open the public hearing if we have any speakers that would like to come forward. Good evening, uh, Jason Barron with uh, Morningstar Law Group here on behalf of Ashton Woods Homes. Um, Ashton Woods, as, as Todd mentioned, and he's covered everything pretty well, so I won't uh, repeat a whole lot of what he said. Ashton Woods is the proposed developer of this site. Uh, if you all recall, the site was zoned back in June for a low density residential development. I believe density was capped at 2.3 units to the acre uh, during that process. And Todd, I don't know if we can go back to the aerial. Um, the the comprehensive plan amendment uh, the request that is before you all is an integral part of what we're doing um, in developing the site. And if you look, hopefully you can still hear me, um, along the aerial, and you can't see it really well here, uh, the, the current alignment shows the Collector Street coming through here, coming through our site, and then heading back out to Arthur Pierce Road. Um, there are there's a home on this corner of the property here, and then this corner of this site here, and there's recently been a home constructed that kind of impacts that blue dash right there. Um, the, the point being that extension, we believed that extension of this road through this location and through this portion of our site was likely impractical um, due to the fact that that subdivision is built out and we had a hard time envisioning a scenario where the town would go in and condemn somebody's side yard um, to extend a collector street. In conversations with the staff, um, there is an existing stub road, <clears throat> Chalmont, which comes off of 1010, makes its way down, and is actually stubbed to this portion of our property here. So a vehicular connection at that location is required by the ordinance in the first instance, and we were always planning that vehicular connection. It seemed to make a lot of sense to us, and, and I believe staff agrees that we would go ahead and make our connection there, make this part of the comprehensive plan. And as you can see, um, hey, we have a hard right turn movement here and then out to Arthur Pierce. And we are stubbing to this property line, essentially to be able, potentially to tie back in to the original proposed alignment south of our site. So that just, just so you all know, that's some of the background on our thinking as to why we think um, this proposed alignment um, makes sense given the existing built environment. And again, given the fact that this connection is being made anyways, so in an, in an effort to be as less, as, as less intrusive on our neighbors as we possibly can, we thought this alignment made a lot of sense. Um, we're here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Are there any other speakers on this matter? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing and entertain questions from the board. Any questions for staff? Just one question. If you continue the road as proposed here, the, the blue line, when you go between those two houses, would either one of those houses have to be removed? Uh, for, this, for this other side over here? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, actually, the house is built right in the middle of where the blue line is. So I'm talking about the uh, the two houses that would be on the west side. Oh, on the west side over here, um, it's it's a possibility. We haven't done those type of designs okay. to try to figure it out. It's uh, simply a line on the map that was before the houses were there. So, 
And I'm curious because it, there seems to be a fairly significant drop in elevation from the road uh, when you proceed west, uh, which I assume would require some rather uh, expensive retaining wall structure, et cetera, to protect the, uh, the houses on each side. Is that correct? Uh, the topography drops off from the back of the properties down to the road. So um, there would be their grading or something that would be needed. So. So it, it would be pretty impactful um, based with the way it is now. <coughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Other questions? Uh, yes, the, um, the looks like six properties that are listed in the staff report that are outside of the uh, area that was just rezoned uh, that are affected. Uh, how are they affected by this? Will they have to uh, give up any of their front yard or anything like that? Uh, no. Uh, those properties are the ones right along Chamont Drive that would front mm. that collect that collector, proposed collector street. Um, the developer would be connecting to them, but in terms of any widenings along that section, in that section there wouldn't be any, no. So there right. would be no impacts to their yards or mm -hmm. to any effect. The, the right of way is already sufficient. Right, correct. Okay, and then there are two properties, uh, one off of uh, Millens Bay Court and one right off of 1010 that are not listed in the staff report, but the blue line crosses. Um, the, the ones up here? Yes. Uh, we're not proposing any change on that northern section yet. That's the section we'll take care of during the CTP uh, amendment process, uh, the, the, the CTP update process. Okay, and when should that be? Well, it's part of the community plan, so mm -hmm. it's underway right now, and we'll probably have uh, recommendations, it looks like uh, next spring or summer, uh, as we move forward with the whole community plan, but it'll be part of the Imagine Carry community plan in whole. Mm -hmm. Have uh, any of the people, either those that are listed in the staff report or those that are not um, given any objection to this? I spoke with uh, both of the both of these property owners, the one that the newly um, built house right here, as well as as well as one on the corner of Millican, Mill, Millens Bay, um, and a representative for these two homes. I explained the process to them, and uh, they look forward to helping out figure out other solutions uh, in the CTP update. Mm -hmm. But it, it, as it stands now, it would cut through one of the houses. It, it currently cuts through them, and, but we're not changing that part at all. We're only connecting to right there, and mm -hmm. this segment here would be changed with the CTP amendment mm -hmm. and with, this, with the CTP update. Mm -hmm. okay. So none were opposed to the current um, proposal here. Mm -hmm. And is that something uh, recorded on the deed so that a future owner of, that, of any of that property, whether well, it's... Um, the existing or the new is sold, would a potential buyer know that uh, about this? I don't know if it's on deeds. I'm not a real estate person, wouldn't be able to answer that. I think I see some heads shaking. <laughs> Excuse me. Good evening. Uh, the, the town doesn't require any, any of our requirements as far as making deed notifications or restrictions. When they, when they plat this, but again, most real estate brokers are aware of the carry tra uh, transportation plan, and they usually direct them to our website, which they can they can view anytime. So it's part of their due diligence, it's part of their brokerage, I, I believe. Uh, but we don't have any other notification than that. Okay. Um, we do typically get calls about this. I probably field calls for about once a month um, mm -hmm. when real estate agents will call and ask about widenings or collector streets, and uh, typically. Uh, once we talk to them, tell them that town doesn't build collector streets, that that's with development. Um, or, you know, if it's a widening, we tell them if it's on our capital improvement plan or if it's not. And that's sufficient for them to know what's planning on coming ahead and helps out with the homeowner's decision making. Mm -hmm. Are there any restrictions as to what you can do on your land if a collector street is shown on that or anything on not, the not as not as a uh, individual homeowner if mm -hmm. there was a redevelopment just like uh, with any of our rezonings that's the point where it becomes um, uh, if there's an annexation into the town 
and a rezoning, that's the point where we start talking about uh, the transportation requirements. And mm -hmm. But if an individual wanted to build a garage or right. some of the there's no restriction. no restriction. They can, like, as in with this property here on the corner, they can build a house right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And then you have to change your plan. Or wait around until they decide to redevelop the, their house or something else. Uh -huh. So, Okay. Um, is there any effect on traffic on uh, Arthur Pierce or Chameau as a result of this? Chameau being the, the part of Chameau that, uh, that is not directly affected, but further off, is, do you the, expect any traffic effect? Uh, there was a traffic study done, I believe, with the rezoning. Was there, there was a retraffic? That's, that's typically dealt with in the rezoning process, but uh -huh. there is a, the developer is putting in a signal um, at Kildare Farm, right? Yeah, I, I, I think I hear your question correctly. By, by with this amendment, does it have any effect right. overall on the overall transportation system? Uh, no, it does not have any effect because we were planning for a collector road in that area anyway. The, the houses that front that, 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 was it six residences that front where the new collector street is going mm -hmm. to be, yeah, they will see some. They will see some, some impact because that will be pretty much the collector route. So they will be seeing some traffic going through that neighborhood. However, the, the subdivision that was already going there now would already have been connected, so they would have felt that traffic anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but we actually downgraded this particular collector in this area from a collector avenue, which is a higher volume type collector street, to what we refer to just as our standard minor collector road. We're anticipating some much smaller volumes on that, that type of roadway than a collector avenue. And that's why you see the, the downgrading of the street to just a regular smaller collector street and driveways would be allowed along that street so that you know, we, could, we could anticipate that, that driveways could be accommodated with those traffic volumes. There's, okay, thank you. And there's also two other connections too, so it's not the only one on that side. Thank you. When you say you've uh, downgraded this to a collector street, the collector avenue sections that have been bisected here, will they become a collector street as well? Uh, in the CTP update, most likely they would. Most likely they will yeah. be? Okay. I can't presume it, but it would be <clears throat> logically that they probably would. Further questions? Okay, I have one question for Mr. Jensen. Um, we were just talking about the impact to those six houses. Um, it, it, it's possible, isn't it, that a, that a developer can put this road in even if they're not, it's not on the comprehensive transportation plan, right? That, we, could, if, we could end up with both the blue line and the orange line. That, that's, that's very right. true, yes. We, we do have, uh, when they come in for a subdivision, our, our land development ordinance requires connectivity. So we would require the extension of that road and connecting up with that neighborhood, regardless whether it's a collector street. Right. So that stub means there's street. going to be traffic past those six houses that's, no matter what. Correct. It's not going to be a dead end anymore. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. I'll take a motion. If somebody's got one. I'll make a motion. I move that the board forward case number 13 CPA 04 to town council with a recommendation for approval to amend the land use plan as proposed with no modifications. I will second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have discussion? The reason I uh, are, are moving to approve the, uh, uh, the change is it makes infinite uh, common sense to change uh, the road uh, to what's being proposed by the developer. Uh, and should prove to, to I think, uh, create a cost savings for the town. And also it would make, I think, for a better subdivision than having that road that seems to sort of cuts the subdivision in half. I'll, I'll say I agree and I agree with the staff's and applicants' observations that um, this still supports connectivity and the function of a collector road for the neighborhood, the public safety function. Um, I believe 
I also agree with the observation that it's probably less overall impact um, to the entire, all of the neighborhoods. And my further observation is that probably would be, it seems like it should be less of a cut through uh, traffic concern for the neighborhood. So I'll support the motion. Yes, I'll, I'll say I, I agree. It, it, it makes sense. Um, furthermore, it's, it's what the developer wants and has, doesn't seem to have adverse impact on other things. Um, also, I think it, it probably will reduce cut through because of the fact that it is longer. It's less tempting as a cut through. So I'll, I'll support it. Okay, any other comments? Then we'll have a vote on the motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. We'll next hear from Deborah Grannon, who will present the staff introduction of 13 REZ08, the Fairview Village PDD amendment. Thank you, good evening. For your consideration is a request to amend an existing PDD located at 4420 1010 Road on approximately 1.37 acres. The subject property is highlighted in yellow. Here's an aerial view showing the existing conditions. Since this photo was taken, there's been some additional infrastructure in place, but the property is currently vacant. Uh, it's part of the Fairview Village Plan Development District and adjacent to a single family residential neighborhood and directly across the street from the uh, Fairview Fire Station. Carey's land use plan designates the property for commercial and the existing zoning is planned development district minor. The property is also located within the Fairview mixed use overlay district. Hence the mixed use um, or the preliminary development plan process where you've got a more detailed plan in front of you for scrutiny as part of the PDD amendment. This is a picture of the existing Fairview Village Plan Development District which designated the property for commercial use and also identified perimeter buffers in the vicinity of the property. There was also an activity center concept plan associated with that early PDD which showed the general location of buildings on the property. So the subject parcel is in this vicinity. What's proposed is not drastically different in terms of the scale of what was approved back in 2000, um, 2008, I believe it was. But what is different is the permitted uses. There was a list of permitted uses associated with the PDD and it did not include what's being proposed tonight. The proposed zoning is an amendment to the PDD and it's to allow light vehicular service. The preliminary development plan shows a 5,000 square foot building with a maximum 24 foot building height, um, enhances the uh, streetscape that was on the original PDD along 1010 Road and shows that it would be located outside a reclaimed water line along that street, increases the size of uh, the perimeter buffer adjacent to the existing residential property and specifies a 10 foot setback off that buffer. Here's a rendering of the preliminary development plan showing the location of the streetscape, uh, which is just slightly larger than what was in the original PDD. The original PDD called for a 15 to 20 foot streetscape, but didn't clearly identify it as being outside that waterline easement. And then as I mentioned, a 55 foot type A buffer adjacent to the residential neighborhood with a 10 foot setback off the buffer. And a rendering provided by the applicant which shows the location of the building, associated parking and buffers on the subject property. The applicants also provided an elevation uh, which is shown here and submitted to staff detailed architectural conditions that are attached to the staff report so that specific items such as 90% masonry, the pitched roof with asphalt shingles, uh, information of that nature could actually be enforced as part of a site plan if the rezoning is approved. And the applicant provided a street view rendering showing how the proposed building would be situated on the subject property and a second view from the intersection. Property owners within 400 feet of the subject property were notified by mail 
uh, the property was posted and advertised in the Cary News. We did receive a protest petition that was beyond the 100 foot boundary uh, to be eligible for a protest petition. And we explained to the citizen at the initial public hearing that she was within 400 feet, hence she received a letter letting her know about the public hearing, but beyond that boundary to be eligible to submit a protest or to be, uh, have her protest counted toward being one that was valid. Concerns expressed in that uh, protest petition and by speakers at the initial town council public hearing were concerns about noise and light impacts, traffic, both pedestrian and vehicular, stormwater management, the potential for crime with the proposed use, environmental concerns, um, fence removal in the buffer. The original PDD document described an opaque fence in the perimeter buffer and the original plan presented did not show that fence. And then there was a citizen who spoke with concerns and opposition to a 10 foot wide multi-use trail that the applicant provided along the subject property. Um, since the town council public hearing, the applicant did uh, resubmit a preliminary development plan that showed the opaque privacy fence back included within the plan. Um, they indicated at the initial public hearing that they had intended to do that. It was just an oversight. So they made sure that that was added back in. The applicant offered to remove the 10 foot wide multi-use trail and go back to a traditional five foot sidewalk. Um, but they had offered a condition at the initial town council public hearing to provide that multi-use trail. It was something that our parks, recreation and cultural resources department saw as being in keeping with long-term plans, even though it was not on the adopted master plan. Um, the applicant said they'd be willing to offer it. Well, at the town council meeting, some neighbors expressed concern about that. So you'll probably hear from those neighbors tonight and you may have seen an email about that. But uh, our Parks and Rec Department has provided some detailed explanation of why staff feels that that trail would be appropriate. This slide shows that the site is not impacted by any stream buffers. However, field determination would be required at the time of site plan review. This shows the existing multi-use trail. Um, here's the subject property. The concerns that we've had from neighbors about having a 10 foot wide multi-use trail in this area is because of the gap in here where the residential property is located. This neighborhood, the Orchard Knoll neighborhood, is not in Cary's ETJ. It's not in our land use area. So at this point in time, the town would not have any plans for the extension of that trail. It would be at such time if and when there was ever redevelopment in this neighborhood that that trail would be extended. But as I stated, the applicant has offered to uh, install that 10 foot multi-use trail along 1010 Road. Uh, 1010 Road is a thoroughfare, as is Holly Springs Road. And there is no uh, current transit routes in the vicinity of the subject property. This concludes staff's presentation. Um, after the applicant speaks and after the public hearing, uh, I will be available if you have any questions. Thank you. I'll go ahead and open the public hearing now. Small adjustment. There we go. My name is Jonathan Wakefield. I'm the development director for Christian Brothers Automotive. Uh, my day started at five o'clock in the morning in Houston, and I'm very glad to be here. Uh, the town of Cary and the growth of our company are uh, becoming intertwined, and I have the authorization to approve, uh, discuss any question that you might possibly have or any additional conditions that the board wishes to um, add to our current submittal. So with that in mind, I think everyone has a handout. It's a little four page document, very simple and it's certainly not all inclusive, but it puts something in your hands that really illustrates who we are and how we operate. The first slide is an artist rendering of what our standard prototype looks like. Staff has made it very clear that although this is a very good first attempt and they, they liked it, uh, there are some additional ar uh, architectural articulation that's going to be required. Uh, a little bit here, a little bit there, 
and we have looked at what those requirements are, and it's certainly well within the, co the scope and in keeping with our trade dress and something we're certainly willing to do. So when those recommendations come down for, from staff, we will certainly comply. The next page shows a completed building, also standard prototype. And the reason that, that we do this, that we show the, the standard and the, uh, and the photo, is we deliver exactly what we say we're going to deliver. So everything from the landscape to the, to the buffers, 55 feet of landscape buffer along the back side of the building. The 10, the, excuse me, the six foot sidewalk that was someone else's promise, we're willing to keep someone else's promise. We're trying very, very hard. The orientation of the building in the bay is away from the adjacent residential. Uh, there were some concerns about noise and here in the next couple of minutes, I'll get into that and explain why we are certainly not a threat or a hindrance. Our hours, very limited. Uh, we actually start about seven o'clock in the morning and by six o'clock at night, we are shuttering up for the day. With all of the vehicles that we have serviced through the day, if we couldn't finish the work, they go in the bays. We don't do outside storage, never. Uh, one, carry like everywhere else that Christian Brothers goes and we have 114 operating stores. We have 14 in construction, nine in development and another nine in the queue after that. So in the next two years, we'll have 150 open locations. We know how to do what we're doing and operate at a very high level. Something that you don't have, but I looked up CNN Money, the top 100 places to live. Town of Cary made the list, congratulations. Uh, we, it will be the 20th location within the top 100 that we operate. We're accustomed to dealing with high standards and we can certainly can comply. We're also closed on Saturdays and Sundays. The first six months of operation, we're actually open on Saturday just to get our clients used to utilizing our services and our shuttle vehicle. Um, it's not uncommon for us to pick somebody up from home with the kids, drop the kids off, take mom, dad, whomever, uh, back, to this, back to our shop, vehicle repaired, take them back home, whatever. We're very, very flexible. What that allows us to do by being closed on those Saturdays and those Sundays we're able to get the best techs you have in the neighborhood. We give them their weekends back. They can go to the ballet with their little girls. They can go to the park with their sons. Um, they can go to church if they so choose, uh, which is important to us personally. Uh, beyond that, um, wages are competitive. Our pricing is very competitive. Uh, we like to say that we offer Lexus level service with a 10% discount. Uh, and the last slide you'll see is the interior of our office space, which looks more like your local doctor's office than, well, the interior of other things. Let's just let that kind of sit out there in the air and we'll not talk about that. We won't speak ill of others. Beyond that, what do we do and how do we do it? And everything else I'm gonna talk about has been presented to staff and with six minutes and 10 seconds left, I will try and go through it quickly, but if you have additional questions, Kate Triplett from Kimley Horn and myself would be more than willing to answer. We basically do everything short of what we, most municipalities consider a heavy automotive, which is taking engines and transmissions in and out, tearing them apart, putting them back together and putting them back in the car. Uh, work of that magnitude is not part of our scope. Uh, taking a complete engine or a complete transmission in and out of a vehicle Given the demographics, it almost never happens. It actually comes out to 0.08% of all the work that we do, very, very minimum. Um, and it just almost never happens, but we don't wanna say that we won't do it. We just want you to know that that's a possibility. We are not a lube or a tire shop. And the reason we can say that is those things are like a grocery store selling bread. You sell it because people need it, not because it makes a lot of money. That's as open and honest as I can possibly be. The average ticket is somewhere around $365 per vehicle. Now, when you do that, you don't have to service 100 vehicles a day because you're taking care of someone's Lexus, Toyota, Mazda once it sits 60,000 miles, 50,000 miles, 100,000 miles, and those services rendered. It doesn't matter if it's a Mercedes or a Mazda. None of it's cheap. So 365 may sound like a significant number, but my son recently had his uh, 2006 Audi worked on and it was very, very painful. Uh, we try and mitigate the pain. One of the concerns that came up was sound, noise, or acoustic issues. Uh, the city of McAllen, Texas, 
uh, asked us to do a, a sonic study, and we were surprised by the results. At our property lines, which are very similar to what we have here, we never went over 51, 51 decibels, that is, no matter what we were doing. When we're running our air hammers, taking tires on and off of things of that nature, at 24 feet from the open bays, we have a spike up to 71 decibels, which once again falls to about 50, 51. I'm talking and you are hearing somewhere on the order of 55 to 60 decibels right now. Uh, a Toyota Camry going by on a street is about 85. The adjacent gas station, when it has a semi truck sitting there and it's offloading and it's running, is running at about 80 to 85. We're not as loud as anybody short of our residential neighbor to the backside. But once again, with our bay orientation, all of our sonic is channeled to the front and does not direct backwards or impact our residential neighbors. Environmental concerns, three and a half minutes, we got a roll here. If you add up all the fluids that we have within our shop, it comes to less than 550 gallons. We have a 750 sand oil separator that sits out in the parking lot. I'll, I'll spare you the details, but we can certainly go over it if you like, but we cannot possibly physically impact the environment with any automotive fluids. Um, there was a member, Ms. Grant, and tell me if I'm getting in trouble by saying this. Uh, there was a member of council who worked in the automotive field and we were able to have some discourse back and forth as to <clears throat> the veracity of the things that I'm saying and he was able to corroborate that. So spill management plans, we certainly have those. We also have, based on the ITE codes or traffic engineering codes, we are designated as code 942, which means based on averages, what kind of traffic impact do we have? Everybody thinks they want a Burger King on the corner or a coffee shop or something of that nature. Maybe you don't, and here's why. For us, with the average size of 5,185 square feet, seven vehicles enter in the morning, five vehicles exit in the morning, seven vehicles enter in the evening or afternoon, and nine exit before close of business. Even if you take those numbers and you double them, it's about equivalent to a McDonald's at 11.30 on any given Friday. And that's what we do all day. If you add up all the vehicles that are in the parking lot at the adjacent uh, food lion, what they have in their parking lot at any one given time is equivalent to what we do over the span of about three days. Our use sounds intense, but its impact is not. Beyond that, what I really want to illustrate in the last minute and a half, we have had as much contact with our neighbors as I think we could possibly do. We've had a neighborhood meeting, met with them. There were some concerns brought at that point answered those questions, everybody left feeling pretty good about it. We had the planning and, uh, excuse me, the uh, council introductory meeting, had a number of folks come up with concerns, had very long discourse about that. Perceptions are hard to overcome and our industry has certainly earned some of the negative connotations that come along with it. But I think we were able to answer those concerns and if there are any of our neighbors who haven't brought any concerns to light and they wanna bring those up t tonight, we certainly invite them to do that and would like the opportunity to help you answer their questions or any concerns that you might have. We are a guest in your home and we wanna act as such. And with that, I'll close unless you have any questions for me or after. Thank you. We'll yes, continue the public hearing now. Anyone who'd like to speak on this matter, please make your way down to the clerk. Hi, uh, again, I'm Tammy Tallison. I live at 6601 Orchard Knoll Drive and my husband is also in the audience. He lives at the same place. Um, I've got a lot of stuff that I wanna talk about and it pertains to noise really after hearing what they said last, uh, I guess that was last month. There are a lot of good things I do see in the plan with the, uh, the concessions they are making, but I'm still worried about noise. And per that study that was done in Texas, 
the mentioning of the air gun reading of 72 decibels at 24 feet from the shop is 12 decibels above the town of Cary's requirements. Additionally, the 51 decibel readings that are happening at the shop were done in the absence of street traffic and aircraft overflights. While we do not have many aircraft overflights in our location, we do have significant traffic coming from the intersection of Holly Springs and Tintin. It can be quite loud during uh, the busier parts of the day. That um, does also bring into you know, a little bit of physics. So sound isn't exclusive. The 60 decibels or 51 decibels that would be coming from the shop are additive to that 85 decibels coming from the to Toyota or the 80 decibels coming from my neighbor's lawnmower that he has to run. This, it adds in such a way that you end up, if you have 260 decibel emissions of sound happening, they can reach 65 decibels in total display of sound. So you do get an additive effect of sound that I think must be appreciated when considering the addition of this to our neighborhood. Additionally, my neighbor doesn't ride his lawnmower eight hours a day. And so having this constant sound present in my neighborhood, a place where I work at home, I mentioned last time I am a professor at two different colleges, working at home is very important to me to actually see my home occasionally. Um, we already have to listen to Food Lion, the loading procedures that come there, the car alarms that go off in the parking lot. We also have a fire station at the end of our road. Those alarms go off a lot. So we have a lot of sound already and we don't need to have any more added to our environment, at least if we can avoid it. Um, speaking also to the rezoning of the location, I'm curious as to why it must be the lot closest to our neighborhood. There are other lots that are cleared in this shopping development that would place this further away from our residential neighborhood that would reduce the sound further. Additionally, the way that the site is perceived on the aerial views that you're shown is incorrect. There's a lot of um, tree and plant growth on the property that appears to be cleared from the aerial overview. If I invite you to Google the location. The Google image is much more updated with the amount of trees that have overgrown as the time has passed from the initial clearing of the land. Additionally, rezoning the area next to our neighborhood to light vehicle service continues a slippery slope that already exists concerning this property. Prior to creation of the commercial area, the land was heavily wooded and was mostly cleared for development. Now again, the rezoning of this property is under consideration to, uh, to further influence our neighborhood environment. Additionally, by rezoning this area next to our neighborhood, while it may pertain just to that lot, what does that say about the rest of the lots in the area? It was mentioned at the last meeting, there was discussion in the board concerning, well, are there other areas that have an automotive shop next to a housing development? Well, yes, there are, but there may have been reasons why that exists. Maybe the automotive shop was there first and then the housing development came up. Just because something exists someone, somewhere else doesn't mean that it's right. And just because something was determined as right in one situation at one particular <clears throat> time doesn't make it right for this situation. If this rezoning passes, there's no going back. And the property that is right against our neighborhood will forever and always have the ability to create these sounds. Recently, an automotive business just down the road failed and has closed. If this were to happen in the case of Christian Brothers closing, we are stuck with the ramifications of this rezoning on our neighborhood. And while they seem to have a lot of good things in place, we can't be ensured that someone occupying the building after them would have the same respect of our neighborhood. Thank you very much for your comments. Okay. Thank you. Do we have other speakers? Good evening. <clears throat> 
Uh, my name is Lucas Schwind. I uh, live in the property directly across for where the proposed rezoning. Uh, I think my property will be the, the most affected um, by this rezoning. Uh, I too, like my neighbor Tammy, I work from home all day long. Um, so I'm a web developer, so I'm on the computer all day in my home office. So I, I believe noise will probably be a concern too. Um, <clears throat> I uh, share the concerns of my neighbor Tammy, so I won't go over them. Um, one of my main concerns is, and I'm very happy to see that the fence is back uh, on the plan. Um, because I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and we have another one on the way, and they like to play and run in the backyard, and we watch them all the time, but you, you cannot guarantee that one of them is gonna run into the woods and end up in the middle of an automobile shop. So the fence, to me, is, has to be there. It's a big security concern. Um, and I also would like to uh, make my objection to the 10-foot sidewalk. Uh, I think it's a little bit of an overkill. Uh, it's going to lead right to where in my property, facing some trees. Uh, and since there is no immediate plans to complete the trail across of our properties, um, I think it's, for the moment, it's, it's an overkill and unnecessary. Five feet, five feet will be more than enough. Um, and that's, that's about it. Um, so, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other speakers on this matter? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Questions from the board for staff or applicant? Um, I have a couple. Um, I guess I'll start with staff. Um, I guess the first thing is partially comment and question confirmation. We have to consider the use that is being added here, not as one of the speakers pointed out, not the specific applicant, even though they're the ones making the proposal. Correct. So. Thank you for bringing that up. It's um, as the applicant indicated. I I did um, have a few lecturing comments about questions at the plan at the uh, town council meeting about making sure that we focused on what specific facts had been submitted. So things like wages, the cost of service, the hours of operation, shuttle, we should just be looking at what has been submitted and pertaining to the land. So that is correct. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I, I think you might have mentioned it. Um, the existing PDD that established the uses, mm -hmm. the date of that, do you, do you, did you mention that or do you know that? I heard there was a 2008, but I don't know if that was when Sorry. these uses were established on the existing zoning. That was um, the Fairview Village. I don't see that I put the date in the staff report. Okay. I, I think I said 2008, but I would need to verify that. I'll be happy to double check that okay. and get back to you on that. Uh, I'm sorry, I do have it in the staff report. May 12th, 2005. 2005, thank you. Um, that's all I have for now anyway. Okay. I might think of others. <laughs> yes, uh, questions I have. First uh, thing, Mr. Miller, he brought out exactly what I was gonna say and point out that uh, we're really concerned with what would be allowed and even in the event that um, Christian uh, Brothers Service fails or for some reason isn't there somebody else who's quite different may come in and work all night long and on weekends and things like that um, so we're looking at just what is in the particular rezoning correct there now, there are, there are um, definitions in our land development ordinance and that is contained in the staff report for what light vehicular service is so there are some limitations within yes. the definition and there are some conditions proposed by the applicant that would run with the land, but you are, you are correct. Mm -hmm. It would apply to any, any business. Now, um, first, is there anything um, in this rezoning other than the fact that it would allow light vehicle service? Well, any um, other changes? Just, just what I've described yeah. with the enhanced buffer. Um, mm -hmm. So those are all specific zoning conditions which the mm -hmm. applicant has offered. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing about as far as uh, 
single-ended or double-ended bays, doors each end of the bay versus one end of the bay or a direction that the bay would face? Oh, th those, no, those, as I explained, those are conditions offered by the applicant within the preliminary development plan. They're the orientation of the building, the size of the building, the office being closer to the road and perpendicular, the building being perpendicular to the street, those are enforceable. Those okay. are things that can be tied to that preliminary development plan and can be enforced at the time of site plan review. And it can be enforced against any future owner that he would not have any door facing um, Orchard Knoll Road Correct. or the, the residential area. Correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, what about hours of operation? Those those are not things that can be enforced. That I made so jotting down the the wages, the hours of operation. Those are not conditions that run with the land or with the permanency <clears throat> of the building. The way it looks on the interior, whether or not they offer a shuttle service. Mm -hmm. Those those were not zoning conditions that staff could tie to the preliminary development plan. Mm -hmm. And as far as the type of service performed, um, I was just looking at a definition mm -hmm. included in the staff report of vehicle service light. Um, and it includes dispensing, selling, and offering of, of various materials for cars. Um, and then uh, repairs of vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't include car washes or retreading of tires, mm -hmm. but is there anything else in the definition that would uh, prevent heavy maintenance, body maintenance, air hammers to take off tires and change tires? Not recapping, but putting new tires on cars, anything you like could that? Put, you could put new tires on, but no, it's no retreading, mm -hmm. uh, um, recapping of tires. Mm -hmm. But it could. But, a, a, but it's not a, it's not a, um, there's no commercial vehicle repair and activity that could take place. So there's no industrial vehicles or commercial vehicles that could be repaired. By commercial vehicles it's, uh, repair, it would, it would have to be a, a passenger vehicle or yeah. owned non-commercially. Um, but there's no... It's not a, it wouldn't be a body shop. It wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a, um, just trying to trying to help you. I'm I'm missing something here. Yeah. But, but the, <laughs> the limitations uh, are about uh, retreading of tires and car washes. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, it could uh, be just about any repair of a privately owned passenger right, vehicle. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And uh, any uh, other than the usual, the sound ordinances and stuff um, for the town of Cary, um, there are no particular limitations on the decibel level at any point that's part of the rezoning part of the application? No. Okay. I think Mr. Rogers had a question. Uh, I personally find the uh, issue of noise to be a little bit of a boogeyman here because if you look at the existing permitted uses currently you could have a nightclub in a bar with or without outdoor operation you can have a car wash you could have another filling station you could have a convenience store uh, seems to me from what this gentleman is saying about the way his business is operating, the hours, the amount of traffic, you're better off to take what <clears throat> this change represents than to live with some of the potentialities that the current zoning allows. That's the way I see it. Other questions for staff or for the applicant, John? Just uh, one really quick question. In regard to the back of the building, do you, are you planning any types of lights, high intensity lights mm -hmm. as a security measure? I'm glad you brought that up. We, uh, our lighting package is, is very minimal. Uh, we don't do pole lighting. Since we don't store vehicles overnight, security is not a major issue. All lights other than the carriage lights at the very front of the building at that cottage section, 
are all downcast, and I believe they're 150 watt. Um, in some places, we may go up to 200, but being downcast, our, mm. our intent is to illuminate the perimeter of the building, not to flood out and, and create uh, a visual distraction. So especially with the 55 um, foot landscape buffer and the, uh, excuse me, the fence, our, our light won't penetrate, absolutely won't penetrate. Okay, thank you. Sir. Just to follow up on that, there's not an a I don't see an access road or anything back behind that. Is that correct? Correct. There would be no reason to light right. that and, for travel and as, or as Ms. Granter pointed out, the, the 55 foot landscape buffer, you can't build a road there. There's th that's locked out. Okay. It's just landscaping from now until forevermore. So even if somebody, and I don't know why they would, if we failed, and that's hard for me to say because we've never had a business fail since. We've been in operation since 82. But theoretically, if we did, and somebody came in and bought that building, from an architectural standpoint, they can't alter the building. Tell me if, if I'm correct here. They would, they would have to come back in with a revision to the preliminary development plan. And just want to point out, with a, with a landscape buffer like that, there's occasionally an opportunity when there might be a sewer easement or a water line easement. Um, the town does have some standards in terms of how that's positioned at what angle to minimize the amount of disturbance. So we don't ever want to say never, and this is why we try not to say undisturbed. We say with disturbances only as allowed by the land development ordinance. But um, the applicant is correct there. You would not be able to expand the building or put in some sort of recreation area back there without coming back before the, the board and the council. Mr. Miller, you had. Um, on the, the 10 foot multi use trail, I think it's a multi use trail, but yes, 10 sir. foot pedestrian, um, if I understand correctly, Ms. Grannon, uh, staff preferred the 10 foot <clears throat> as, as originally proposed. This and, is, um, and we have a representation, we have representation from our parks and rec department here tonight uh, with some specifics if you have them, but there is a um, existing street side trail along the southern side of 1010 Road here on property that's within the town of Cary. Uh, the master plan does not show the future trail extending here. That's something that's being considered. And as, as we're doing the amendments to the, the long range plan, that's probably something that would be introduced. Uh, we mentioned that to the applicant and let them know. And the applicant offered that trail but it is not a requirement per the land development ordinance at this time. And then if I understand correctly, at least several of the neighbors, at least one of whom we heard from tonight said they would prefer a standard five foot sidewalk. And I guess for the applicant, do I understand correctly that you, you would be just as willing to do that? Or I don't want to put, I mean. It, to, to us, it makes no difference. We thought we were being good sure. neighbors and it got us in trouble. So uh, <laughs> we'd back away from it if we could, but we're and, stuck. And, and Ms. Grant, I, I think it's correct. We can't request, impose or even request conditions, but if the applicant offers a The applicant has to voluntarily instead, offer conditions. Right. Um, the Planning and Zoning Board has the option of saying whether or not they would you know, recommend to council not to accept a certain condition. Right. The council has the opportunity to determine whether or not a condition is appropriate and whether or not they choose to accept it. And I guess just to confirm the applicant, you're, you would be just as happy with either, is that correct? We, we just want our neighbors happy on that score, All right. whichever, sir. So Thank just you. to clarify, you are offering a five foot? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Well, the applicant has offered a 10 foot is what I've heard, but would be willing willing to remove that if if council does not want to accept that or if the planning and zoning board does not want to recommend that mr chairman okay. could, could we hear from the parks and rec person absolutely what i'd, what I'd like to have answered is uh, it seems as if the potential we're recommending a 10-foot multi-use sidewalk <clears throat> due to the potential of hooking up with a street side trail that exists on the south side. However, we have a couple of pieces of property in between there that are no longer, that aren't part of carry. I don't even hear any plans to annex that. I would assume the neighbors would have to 
initiate that? Well, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how you feel this is going to connect with the additional problem of mature trees already on the, on the mm -hmm. northern border of their property where that trail would have to be placed. Okay, um, well, just to speak to the trail location, it's a 10 foot wide trail, <clears throat> generally follows the same footprint of a sidewalk. In this case, there would be a five foot utility strip off the back of curb, then the 10 foot trail, and then a two foot shoulder. So the right of way, typical right of way width doesn't accommodate um, the street side trails. And so we usually get a greenway easement outside of that. The least impact would be a, a six foot um, easement adjacent to the right of way. Um, and that doesn't account for any temporary construction easement that might be needed to um, address grading in that area. In terms of when that might be constructed, um, short of that um, develop, orchard null redeveloping, which isn't likely, then uh, that would likely be constructed as, as part of a, a capital project, I would assume. Possibly when that um, road widening, if the gap in the road widening ever got completed, um, or if you know, uh, council saw fit to uh, address the street side trail connection independently of the road widening, possibly. Um, I don't believe there is a sidewalk there now, so there is no uh, pedestrian connection to that shopping area along the road. Um, there, there are about um, seven miles or so of trail proposed within about a mile and a half radius of, of that um, shopping center, um, as well as Crowder Park, which is kind of across the street, and uh, Bartley Park site, which will, um, was funded with bond funding. And then there is a, a proposed park site also um, off of Pierce Olive, somewhere in that vicinity, um, as well as the YMCA, which is south of the shopping center. So all of that is within um, you know, a sh fairly short radius in terms of getting on a bicycle um, to this shopping center. So we felt that rather than having that uh, street side trail end at the end of the subdivision. It was a logical connection to extend it to this commercial area so that families with kids um, on bicycles or strollers um, could get from their neighborhood or from the park over to the commercial areas to get something to eat, something to drink, that sort of thing. So, so am I mistaken that the, the property, the residential properties that these people are representing here tonight are part of Cary? It's my understanding that they're not, that they're a donut hole, so to speak, and that I'm trying to figure out how the town would end up spending money. They are, they are in our um, urban service area, um, very low density residential on the land use plan, but they do not have Cary zoning and they are not in Cary's ETJ, they are in Wake County. So if at such time there was a request for a citizen initiated annexation, or if many years from now, the neighborhood looked to redevelop to something with higher densities, then they would, then they would come to carry for rezoning or they would potentially come to carry at some point in time for annexation. I, I guess what I'm, what I'm feeling out of this is the, the probability that you're gonna be able to connect that 10 foot multi-use trail in this commercial space to that existing roadside trail is pretty small. Well, ultimately, I would expect that that would most likely happen, like I said, with the road, um, when the road widening gets addressed and the curb and gutter gets connected between the commercial area and Church Hill um, State subdivision. Can I ask a clarifying ask. question? We can, if we want to build a sidewalk across those parcels with a capital project, we can do that without them redeveloping. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Okay, that's so. Yes. So the potential is that you can connect those two things without them ever um, being annexed or requesting annexation. Right. That's what I'm trying to sort okay. of figure out. Is okay. I got the impression we can't, and apparently we can't. You can't. We have we have projects like that underway along 55, where it's not in the town of Cary and we've got a capital right sidewalk right project going on there. Okay, thank you. Sure. 
I have uh, just one more question. I noticed in the uh, permissible uses table <clears throat> on page two of the staff report, uh, one of the things listed was uh, vehicle filling station. And um, under that category, I know this is becoming less and less common, but uh, in the old days and even now in some cases, gas stations offered all kinds of vehicle service. Uh, you could have almost anything take with your car taken care of at the gas station. Um, in this category, under the vehicle filling station category, would it allow already all kind of uh, vehicle uses? No, that's, that's why we told the applicant that they would need for vehicle repair, they would need mm -hmm. to go through the rezoning process mm -hmm. because the dispensing of gas was not sufficient for them to be able to do the type of automotive repair and maintenance that they were proposing. So, so for a filling station, your primary purpose has yeah. to be selling gas. Right, yeah, didn't, didn't give them enough um, leeway to be able to do the type of services they wanted to provide. Anyone who hasn't asked a question yet have a question. Okay. I have one question for, for Mary. Um, is it Mary? Sandy. Sandy, I'm sorry. I'm back a little ways in time there. Um, the connecting, the trail that is along the blue, the blue line that we see there along the south side of that road that's existing, how wide is that? It's a 10 foot wide. That's a 10 foot wide. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. That's my only question. I just want to ask Ms. Grinnon if she could put the slide up that had the concerns that were expressed um, by that neighbors and citizens again. Landscaping? It had the lighting and the noise and the, the, the list of concerns that had been expressed. Oh, I'm sorry. At, at okay. public hearings or through other contact. Thank you. I guess that leads to one more question. Um, the one of the concerns was the fence removal. I think I heard the fence has been added, and then, so you can confirm that. Correct. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? If not, maybe we have a motion. I'll make a motion. I move that the board forward case number 13 REZ 08 to town council with a recommendation for approval as it is consistent with the comprehensive plan and all other applicable plans and is reasonable and in the public interest for the reasons set forth in the staff report and presentation. And I will second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, the reason I made the motion is I agree with Mr. Rogers that the noise issue seems to be the prevailing issue on the part of some of the adjoining uh, homeowners. But in looking at some of the permitted uses, those that were mentioned by Mr. Rogers, they also include a kennel. And I can't think of any business that would present the potential for noise greater than a kennel. Uh, not only that, but I like the way that they have designed the building. I think that when you look at some of the other businesses over there, my view is it's even a better looking building than what exists already there. And so for those reasons, uh, I make the motion. Okay, any further discussion? Yes, um, the reason I second it, uh, there are other things that I would prefer at the nice to have a, a nice but low-cost <clears throat> restaurant or a coffee shop or something like that. There are a lot of things that I would enjoy living near more than, than what is proposed. However, when my car breaks down, my attitude changes completely. Some things are nice, some things are essential. Um, this is to a certain extent an annoyance. Um, I know that um, there are possible things that would be better, but there is, has been pointed out there are things that could be worse. Um, but it is very important for all of us who have cars that occasionally need repairs uh, that we do have repair shops around town. So 
that would tend to lead me to support it. Plus, um, I agree that as far as noise is concerned, uh, there are things that are noisier or as noisy as that. Uh, while we have to look at this as if it could be any owner, not uh, just the Christian Brothers Automotive, um, chances are it will be them. And the proposal looks very good. I hope that they do succeed and are there. But uh, it is something that uh, we need. There are some minor annoyances that I think we would put up with because of the fact that we do need this type of thing um, in different areas of town. So therefore, I'll support it. Thank you. Any other comments? I just have one. Yes. Um, I am in, agree in agreement with my peers here. Um, I think that <clears throat> the we heard the traffic and the noise issues as a concern, but I also think that the applicant has has exemplified the good neighbor attitude by addressing those and the, his willingness to, uh, their willingness to address them. So I appreciate that. That's why I will support it as well. Okay, Mr. Gascoigne. Yeah, just uh, <clears throat> I will support the motion and just a little rationale. I heard uh, the comment brought up tonight <clears throat> about uh, we need to look at what is allowed in the zoning as opposed to the proposal on the table. I'm glad that was brought up. That's, you know, at work sessions and we're taught that over and over. It's not the specific thing on the table, it's the overall use. And looking at this list of permitted uses, you know, there are some pretty intense uses for this property, nightclub, um, convenience stores, you know, both with potentials to operate late at night, child care, daycare center, uh, potential for a lot of noise and a backyard environment and I'm looking at this use and I don't see this use really increasing the intensity of this list had this list not included any type of vehicle car wash had it not included any type of outdoor dining type of thing a convenience store that could be open 24 hours it would be a completely different scenario but I'm looking at the use as it fits in here and and I, I don't see any increase in the intensity over what's already on here so that's insight into my supporting the motion. Thank you. Um, I, I generally agree with uh, Mr. Gascoigne. Um, I, I heard the concerns from the citizens, lighting and noise, uh, potential crime, stormwater uh, environment, um, and a couple that I think have sort of been ameliorated. Uh, and I think they're valid concerns. They absolutely are valid concerns. Uh, but I think this use is comparable and in many cases, uh, preferable uh, to some of the other things that could already go there today. Um, and they've been enumerated, but you know, a kennel, a bank with a drive through a bank with a drive through is a lot of traffic. A restaurant, nightclub, bar, office is a lot of traffic. People don't recognize that. Um, daycare can generate a lot of traffic. Clinics, um, and, and so I agree with Mr. Gascoigne. I think it's a, a comparable to use to what's already there. In some cases, um, not as uh, impactful on, on the neighborhood. I guess I will say I, I would have preferred uh, a, a recommendation that we not um, accept the condition that the applicant offered for the 10-foot um, multi-use trail. I think the neighbors have expressed a five-foot sidewalk preference. I think that's reasonable, um, but it's not enough to keep me from supporting the motion. But I will say that um, I would hope that council would at least uh, consider both of those alternatives and, and make a determination on this. Um, I think that was my only concern was this discussion about the sidewalk. I'm not sure that's thoroughly vetted. And so I hope that between now and when it goes to council, that's explored a little bit more. But again, that is not enough concern to keep me from voting against the motion. So I will call the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. And with that, we'll move on to our case without a public hearing. It is 13 REZ 10, the H7 High School Roberts Road discussion. Thank you, Ms. Bierman. Good evening. This is a request by the Wake County Board of Education to apply initial town of Cary zoning to about 88 acres. It's located at the northeast corner of Green Level Church Road and Roberts Road. 
This is the vicinity map. You can see the uh, properties involved outlined in yellow. The properties that are shaded are uh, properties that are either owned by the town or are subject to uh, conservation easements that were um, obtained through grants from the Clean Water Management Trust Fund. So that's why you see so many uh, shaded parcels in that area. You can also see um, in this, this site is the um, future Roberts Road Park site. And the Manors at Green Level Crossing is a subdivision um, to the southeast. The proposed zoning is R40 in Wake County. There is a, um, an annexation petition associated with this that will go um, through the process as well at the time of final action. The proposed zoning is R40. This is a general use rezoning case. The applicant did not submit any zoning conditions with it, uh, with this, and because it is a general rezoning case, as uh, the way that our ordinance works with the process with that, it cannot be converted to conditional use during the process, so there is not the uh, opportunity to add zoning conditions uh, to this type of case. The land use plan uh, designates this area for conservation, residential, low density. Also a portion is in the parks and open space designation. The two notes um, that are shown there, note, note 12, is some detail on the plan that refers to the conservation residential development option on the plan and um, the note um, or the area shown as Num note 11 just refers to the White Oak Creek Conservation Project that uh, was the reason why there's so much conservation uh, easement uh, in that location. According to Kerry GIS maps, the property is impacted by stream buffers and floodplains that are associated with White Oak Creek. This shows the existing and proposed greenways in the area and again you can see the Roberts Road Park site to the east and greenway connections uh, through that area. On the Cary's transportation plan, Green Level Church Road is a major thoroughfare and Roberts Road is designated as a minor thoroughfare. A traffic study was not required for the rezoning as the traffic uh, generation and just going from R40 in Wake County to R40 in the town of Cary is not um, substantially dif uh, different. A traffic study has been prepared as required by DOT. Um, even though this is uh, rezoning to R40, um, the owner of the property is the Wake County Board of Education, so the intent is to build a high school in this location. So in looking ahead with that, the traffic study has been performed. Um, as required by DOT. There has been a meeting between DOT, um, Wake County, the Wake County um, Board of Edu or the School Board, um, town staff, and the applicant's uh, engineer for the traffic study. So there have been uh, a meeting that has taken place to start looking at the, the traffic and the impacts and the improvements that may be required. Um, as part of the process, at the time of the site plan, this will go uh, forward to town council as a quasi-judicial hearing, and all of those traffic impacts will be um, brought up and included as part of that um, quasi-judicial hearing process as opposed to um, coming forward at the time of the rezoning. The concerns that were raised at the public hearing before town council included um, Concerns related to traffic and buffers, well, traffic related to the school um, buffers adjacent to uh, parking lots and athletic fields. And again, these are all issues that will be addressed at the time of the site plan. Uh, also, the Lassiter Sloan House, which is on the historic inventory, is on the site. Um, and this is a photograph of that, that house. There are representatives um, from the um, with the applicant here tonight, I believe that can can speak to any plans that there may be uh, related to that particular residence. Uh, that concludes staff's presentation, and uh, as I mentioned, the applicant is here, and I'll be available for questions as well. Thank you, Ms. Spearman. Would the applicant like to come forward? <clears throat> Good 
evening. I'm Betty Parker, Real Estate Services Director with the Wake County Public School System. Uh, and to follow up on the last Lassiter Sloan House, we've been in contact with Gary Roth with Capital Area Preservation to discuss the house. We don't have a specific use for it, but I will um, caution everyone that as part of our purchase agreement, the former owners are continuing to lease this house. As part of those contractual terms, they've got the right to relocate the house from the property if they so desire. So we've, we've asked them to confirm what their intention is. There's about a year left on the lease. So if, if they choose to move the house, it will be their intention to preserve it. Uh, if they choose not to move the house, then we're open to working with Capital Area Preservation to relocate it. Uh, I've opened conversations with Paul Kuhn and Doug McCraney with Parks, Rec, and Cultural Resources to see if there's an opportunity to relocate it to the park site, either adjacent or to another park site. Uh, Mr. Roth had indicated that he doesn't have uh, property to move it to, but his, his primary issue is to try to relocate it. So we're happy to work with him. Uh, it'll take us a little while to work through that, but we'll continue to do that. We don't intend to have it remain on the site. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly tight site for us. So we're gonna have to, to do something to work to remove that. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have on, on that or any other issue in regards to this particular site and petition. Okay, great. Any questions from the board for Ms. Parker or Ms. Spearman? Yes. Uh, for Ms. Spearman, um, we're rezoning it from R40 to R40. That's um, correct. What changes in this rezoning? Uh, the, the primary change is it goes from being in Wake County's jurisdiction to the town of Cary. Um, in order for utilities to be provided, it would need to be annexed into Cary so that those utilities could be provided. In order to annex, uh, the uh, town of Cary zoning district would be applied rather than the Wake County. R40 is um, a, a district that the, the R40 district in Wake County, it may not be exact. Um, every jurisdiction is a little bit unique, but basically the R40 districts would be very comparable. So from, from that standpoint, there's not any significant um, change related to the ultimate use of the property that would be allowed, but the big, the big change is the jurisdiction change. Okay. And um, school would be permitted either under the county R40 or carries R40. That's correct. So we're not and, making any decision about whether or not a school would be permitted. Right, and uh, the town's jurisdiction, um, a school is allowed in the R40 if it's, in, with the town of Cary, if a school was on, um, if the site was smaller than 20 acres, a special use permit would be required based mm -hmm. on the use, but for a larger site, it is allowed by right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I have some uh, relating to the Lassiter Sloan House, I guess mostly for the applicant um, and maybe for staff also. Um, has capillary preservation had an opportunity to inspect or examine the house and at this point do you know not yet our first conversation was on friday and i need to make some arrangements with the tenant to gain access to it but we plan on scheduling that uh, mr roth did indicate from information he had uh, that he was most concerned about the extent to which the house had maintained its appropriate historic character he felt like one original fireplace might have been removed. He'd seen some changes in windows and doors, I think he said. So I, I don't think it's in um, complete original condition, but that's the only information we have about it. So in, in the coming weeks, we'll schedule a time to go with him. And I think Ms. Muir and, and Mr. Yara indicated a um, desire to go along with, and we're happy to have company. Do you think it would be possible to arrange for capital area preservation to look at it in person and you know make that sort of assessment of course okay all right of and course. um and i think you indicate just to clarify that the current owners already have the ability to move it should they so choose uh should they not you would be willing to work with others um to accomplish something if land can be found and all of those things are met. correct that? with one minor clarification it was the previous owners that are now tenants right. that okay. have the right the, the current okay. owners would be the Board of Education. Sure, right. But okay. other than that, you're completely correct. All right. And then um, I guess Ms. Bierman is, it sounds like the town 
that there's willingness on the part of the town to work with the applicant with capital area preservation, potentially look for places to move it. I mean, we've done these sort of things before with multi-party collaboration, most recently with the um, Upchurch Farmhouse. We, um, we have, and our staff has been in contact with Gary Roth as well, and just to, um, you know, confirm that discussion where he did indicate that before making a, you know, final determination on the status of the house, he would need to make that visit, and that's... Um, you know, discussions are underway to, to get that meeting together to make that happen. And then I guess one more for the applicant. Um, how critical of a timeline are you on here in terms of entertaining discussions to see what might be possible uh, if it makes sense to move that house? I think our timeline is critical. This is one of the most important schools that we need to bring online. There's extensive crowding and growth and um, with, the, with the upcoming bond on October 8th, uh, it's critical for us to continue our design so that we're ready to build as soon as the funding is ready uh, from the bond when it passes. So um, I, I think between the time uh, of any approval of the zoning and our beginning of construction, there's ample time to work through those details. As it is, the tenant has the right to remain in the house for another year. So I don't think we're going to want to breach that lease with the tenant under any circumstances. So there's plenty of time to, to ramp up. And, and I don't want to overstate um, the town's ability to provide property. We've opened those discussions. They're certainly willing to look at it. But at the end of the day, if there's not property, we still remain open to Mr. Roth moving it to any other location that he can find that would be suitable. Um, we're, we're on the need to move in, not necessarily on the where it goes in. All right, understand. But we're, but we're happy to collaborate. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. And may, if I may just make a comment on the process uh, in, in case that's of um, any help with the, um, the site plan can't be submitted until after the rezoning action takes right. place. Um, as that site plan moves forward the, at the, uh, after all the reviews happen, which takes you know, some, a number of months to go through the uh, preparation of the site plan, the review of the site plan, number of different uh, issues uh, related to that. The, when it goes for final action, that would be at a quasi-judicial hearing before uh, council. So there is time to, to work those issues out. And I think if there were some concerns related to these issues, um, particularly since it's not a um, conditional use zoning case to attach condi conditions to, you could certainly um, just express concerns um, or, you know, raise, raise whatever issues right. that you would like to make sure that are looked at through that quasi-judicial process, which will go through another um, vetting process with the special um, public hearing. Very good. Thank you. That's all I have. Anything else? Okay. If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion. I move to the board forward case number 13 REZ 10 to town council with a recommendation for approval as it is consistent with the comprehensive plan and all other applicable plans and is reasonable in the public interest for the reasons set forth in the staff report and presentation. Second. Oh, Go ahead. Here we have a motion and we have a second. Any discussion? I just want to um, recognize Mrs. Parker for being very available last week to me about questions that I had about this issue um, and, and really working very quickly to get up with Gary Roth and start the ball rolling on this process. So thank you very much for that. All right, with that, I'll call the vote. Uh, well, I, oh, I, if I, sorry. Just, I want to say, if I could, um, the, the, I, I am clearly, I think, concerned about um, the Lassiter Sloan House. Um, and the, the town really has no wherewithal to require preservation. Uh, it is up to the property owners and, and all the stakeholders to collaborate if they choose to do that. And in this case, it seems as though that exists. So I would echo your, your comment. Um, it, it's 
very heartening to see that the, the applicant is willing to work on that, that they've already worked, uh, contacted Gary Roth. It seems we have time to do that, and I just sort of wanted to be on the record of saying um, I think it's really important that we pursue that to determine if this is a house that ought to be preserved, and if so, if there are ways to do it. Um. Great. I, I would lo just like to add one comment, and that is uh, we've received email about the appropriateness of having a school at this location versus something else. Uh, that's really not an issue that has anything to do with this decision. That's up to the uh, Wake County Board of Education who owns this land, uh, and that is not part of the vote tonight. Any other discussion? All right, this time I'll put it up for a vote. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? None? The motion carries seven to zero. Is that everything carried seven to zero tonight? Yeah. Yes. All right. And, and our next one almost always carries unanimously. Would anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll be happy to do that. <laughs> and I will second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. It's a record. Put it in the books. Carrie TV. Visit the Town of Carrie's website at townofcarrie.org.